Morning class. So today we're going to be going over chapter 20, immunologic emergencies. So EMTs often respond to calls involving allergic reactions. Allergy-related emergencies may involve acute airway obstruction or a cardiovascular collapse. You must be able to treat these life-threatening complications, distinguish between the body's usual response to an allergen and, a, and an allergic reaction. So anatomy, anatomy and physiology, the immune system protects the body from foreign substances and organisms. When a foreign substance invades the body, the body goes on alert. The body initiates a series of responses to inactivate the invader. So pathophysiology, an allergic reaction is an exaggerated immune response to any substance not caused directly by an outside stimulus caused by the body's immune system releases chemicals to combat the stimulus. So some patients may not know what is causing their reaction. You must recognize the signs and symptoms, maintain a high index of suspicion. Allergic reaction may be mild and local or severe and systemic. So anaphylaxis is an extreme life-threatening allergic reaction, it involves multiple organ systems, can rapidly result in shock and death. So these are your common signs and symptoms for someone who's suffering an allergic reaction. Not everyone will have all these symptoms. They might only have some of them or a, a mild allergic reaction. So skin, pruritus, urticaria, edema, so swelling, itching, uh, redness. Blood vessels are going to vasodilate, they're going to leak, they're going to third space. So their blood pressure is going to drop, so they're going to be hypotensive. So the heart decreased output because there's not enough blood flowing through the system. Decreased coronary flow because uh, the vessels are open and there's not a lot of fluid. Lungs bronchospasm, uh, vasoconstriction. So your lungs are going to kind of close up a little bit in your bronchioles. So they're going to have what we've talked about is wheezing. So you could either give them an MDI, a meter dose inhaler, or some type of breathing treatment. So a common one is bee stings. So beware of those signs and symptoms for a possible allergic reaction. So three common signs of uh, anaphylaxis you'd carry are hives. So we got hives right here, angioedema, swelling of the tongue. That's pretty severe. She needs some uh, epi right away and wheezing. So it can be down here in the lungs a little bit. <laughs> Patients may also experience hypotension due to vasodilation and increased capillary permeability, gastrointestinal dysfunction, e.g. nausea, vomiting, and abdominal cramps. So common allergens, food, symptoms may take more than 30 minutes to appear, shellfish and nuts. Medication, if medication is injected, the reaction may be immediate and severe. Reactions to oral medications may take more than 30 minutes to appear. So if you suspect someone's had an allergic reaction to something, always ask them if they, they've had anything to eat uh, recently and what have they had, if they've had it before, or if they've taken a new medication. So plants, dust, pollens, and other plant materials, ragweed, ryegrass, maple, and oak. Chemicals, makeup, soap, and hair dye. Latex is of particular concern to healthcare providers. So you're going to be wearing nitrile gloves. Uh, a lot of people are allergic to latex nowadays. So most, most ambulance companies are going to be carrying nitrile gloves. We carry nitrile gloves in Monterey County. So insect bites and stings. Envenomation, the process of an insect injecting its venom. The reaction may be localized. Basically, wherever the uh, patient, excuse me, the bee or whatever stings you is going to be localized to that area. It's not going to spread or systemic. It's going to be all over the body. So insect stings, approximately 3% of adults and 1% of children are allergic to the venom of bees, wasps, and hornets. Insect stings cause at least 50 deaths a year in the United States. The stinging organ of most insects is a small hollow spine projecting from the abdomen. Honeybees cannot withdraw their stingers. Wasps and hornets can sting multiple times. So if you get a stinger stuck in you, a good way to take it out is get out your credit card or get out your debit card um, or even your driver's license. 
and scrape the stinger out. Do not pull it because it might still be stuck in there and it might still inject venom into your skin. So some ants, especially fire ants, strike repeatedly. So picture of someone's getting bit. Signs and symptoms, sudden pain, swelling, localized heat, urticaria, redness, and light skin individuals, itching and a wheel. In severe anaphylactic cases, patients may experience bronchospasm and wheezing, chest tightness and coughing, dyspnea, anxiety, uh, gastrointestinal complaints, and hypotension. Patients may occasionally experience respiratory failure if untreated anaphylactic reaction can produce rapidly to death. So patient assessment and immunologic emergency, scene size up, scene safety. Patient's environment or recent activity may indicate the source of an allergic reaction. Patient assessment and immunologic emergency, scene safety, be mindful of other potential causes of respiratory distress. Consider the need for additional resources such as advanced life support or ALS personnel. So primary assessment, quickly identify and treat any immediate or potential life threats. Form a general impression. May present as respiratory or cardiovascular distress in the form of shock. Patients will often appear very anxious. Look for a medical identification tag. Airway and breathing. Anaphylaxis can cause rapid swelling of the upper airway. Work quickly to determine the severity of the symptoms. If the patient looks like they're swelling up in their tongue, the, this is a serious medical emergency. You might have to give epi rapidly and transport code 3 to the hospital. So quickly assess for increased work of breathing, use of accessory muscles, head bobbing, tripod position, nostril flaring, and abnormal breath sounds. Assist the patient into a comfortable position to maximize ventilations. If signs of shock emerge, place the patient in the supine position, initiate high flow oxygen as necessary. In severe situations, assist ventilations. So have your BVM ready. Also have your OPA or MPA ready. Circulation, patients may present with hypotension, assess for signs of hypoperfusion, treat for shock. The definitive treatment for anaphylactic shock is epinephrine. So remember you guys, doses. Uh, so 0 0.15 to 0 0.3. 0 0.15 is gonna be a pediatric dose and an adult dose can be 0 0.3 milligrams. So transport decision, always provide prompt transport for any patient who may be having an allergic reaction. If the patient does not exhibit severe symptoms, consider continuing the assessment, err on the side of emergency transport. Always wanna err on the side of caution. If you think it's gonna benefit the patient to get them to the hospital a little quicker, go ahead and upgrade. Go ahead and go code three to the hospital. So history taking, investigate chief complaint, history of present illness, identify associated signs and symptoms. So additional signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction. So in your respiratory system, so either sneezy or sneezing or an itchy runny nose, uh, shortness of breath, tightness in chest, cough, hoarseness, labored respiration, wheezing, cardiovascular system, because your blood's loot, because your, uh, excuse me, your uh, vessels dilate, you're losing blood, you're going to increase in pulse rate, tachycardia, um, to try and get more blood out into your system. Red flush, hot skin, to increase blood pressure is hypotension as the blood vessels, bless, vessels dilate. Skin, flushing, itching, urticaria, swelling, cyanosis, warm tingling, feeling in the face, mouth, chest, feet, or hands. Other findings, decreased mental status, anxiety, GI problems, headache, itchy, watery eyes, and dizziness. So sample history. If possible, ask the following questions. Have any interventions already been completed? Has the patient experienced a severe allergic reaction in the past? So have any interventions already been completed? Does the patient take a, an MDI? Do, do they have an inhaler? Do they have an EpiPen? Have they used it? Did it work? Um, did it help the patient? And then has a patient experienced this kind of thing in the past? Because they'll usually tell you, 
Um, you know, if I get two rounds of Epi, I'll be fine after my allergic reaction. So it's good to know if they've had it in the past. They might give you some clues on how to help them, help them out before you get to the hospital. Be alert for any statements regarding ingestion of foods that might cause allergic reactions. Ask about GI complaints, nausea, or vomiting. Secondary assessment, physical examination. Perform a systemic head to toe or focus assessment. Auscultate for abnormal breast sounds. So you're gonna auscultate back, both front and back, uh, both upper and lower uh, lungs. Inspect the skin, see if you see any hives, redness or swelling. Assess baseline vital signs. Skin signs may be unreliable. Monitoring devices. Pulse oximeter can be a useful method to assess the patient's perfusion status. Decision to apply oxygen should be based on airway patency, work of breathing, and abnormal lung sounds. If you think it's going to benefit the patient, go ahead and throw them on some oxygen. So reassessment. Repeat the primary assessment. Reassess the patient's vital signs and repeat the focused physical assessment. If patient is unstable, reassess every five minutes. If patient is stable, reassess every 15 minutes. Watch for signs of shock. Interventions, determine the severity of the reaction. Mild reactions require supportive care and monitoring. Anaphylaxis, anaphylaxis requires epinephrine and ventilatory support. Recheck your interventions, you're always rechecking to make sure they're still working, they're gonna improve the patient. See if you have to change something, if the patient deteriorates. Communication documentation. Documentation should include signs and symptoms, reasons why you chose to provide the care you did, and patient's response to your treatment. Remember, if you guys don't document what you guys did for the patient, it didn't happen. If you gave the patient some epi and a breathing treatment, make sure you document it. It's very important. And then also, why you chose to, to give them epi. Was their blood pressure 70 over 30? Did you hear wheezing in their lungs? Is that why you gave them some albuterol or breathing treatment? Make sure you document everything you do. So emergency medical care of immunologic emergencies. Patient appears to be having a severe allergic or anaphylactic reaction. Administer BLS. Provide tr prompt transport to the hospital. If the stinger is present, scrape the skin with the edge of a sharp, stiff object such as a credit card. Do not use tweezers or forceps. So this was what I was saying earlier. Grab your credit card and scrape along skin. It's going to help pull that stinger out that's lodged in right there. If you use tweezers and you try and pull it out, part of the stinger might come out, but there's still going to be a little, little part left in there. So it's a lot easier to go ahead and grab a credit card and scrape across the skin. Be alert for signs of airway swelling and other signs of anaphylaxis. Does a patient look like they have, they have swelling? Um, in their face, in their tongue, uh, in their mouth. Place the patient in a supine position and give oxygen as needed. Monitor the patient's vital signs. Epinephrine mimics the symp sympathetic uh, response or fight or flight. Rapidly reverses the effects of anaphylaxis prescribed by a physician and comes pre-dose in an epinephrine injector, EpiPen. Refer to local protocols or consult medical control. So all the adult EpiPen delivers 0 0.3 milligrams of epinephrine, and the infant child system delivers 0 0.15 milligrams. You guys have played with these before a little bit. You guys know how to use them. You guys know where to uh, use them on the thigh, outer mid thigh. You're gonna hold in for 10 seconds. So this is a two pack, so it comes with two pens. A lot of people who do carry EpiPens, they're gonna have um, a duo injector or two doses. So side effects of epinephrine. High blood pressure, increased pulse rate, anxiety, cardiac arrhythmias, paler, dizziness, chest pain, headache, nausea, and vomiting. Do not give epinephrine to patients without signs of respiratory compromise or hypotension. Patients who do not meet the criteria for a diagnosis of anaphylaxis. 
So epinephrine's mainly given to people with severe allergic reactions. If a patient has mild allergic reactions, you're probably just going to have some supportive care, maybe give them a uh, breathing treatment, and then transport them to the hospital. Epinephrine is a powerful drug. I've only given it twice in my career for an allergic reaction. So make sure the patient is a severe case before you hand somebody over epinephrine. So review, the signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction are caused by the release of So A, the two chief chemicals released by the body that result in the signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction are histamine and leukotrienes. Epinephrine or adrenaline is used to treat allergic reactions. Glucagon is a hormone secreted by the pancreas that helps to control metabolism. So histamine is a chemical that along with leukotrienes is released to cause an allergic reaction. So if you guys ever heard of antihistamines or Benadryl, Benadryl works against histamines. So normally people with allergic reactions will take Benadryl. So it actually says the correct answer should be D, both histamine and leukotrienes, not just A. So leukotrienes are a chemical that is released along with histamine cause an allergic reaction. So the negative effects associated with anaphylactic shock are the result of So what are the three main signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction and what do they do to the body so C anaphylaxis is an extreme allergic reaction that is life-threatening and involves multiple organ systems in severe cases anaphylaxis can result can rapidly result in death one of the most common signs of anaphylaxis is a wheezing high-pitched whistling breath sound that is typically heard on expiration, usually resulting from bronchospasm or bronchoconstriction and increased mucus production. So, severe internal fluid loss. Body does not lose fluid. Blood pools in the dilated circulatory system and it just causes less blood flow back to the heart. Inadequate pumping of the heart, it's not a problem, it's cardiac output is decreased due to poor return to the heart. So you're gonna have your vasodilation, your bronchoconstriction. You're called to a local baseball park for a 23-year-old man with difficulty breathing. He states that he ate a package of peanuts approximately 30 minutes ago and denies any allergies or past medical history. Your assessment reveals widespread uticaria, tachycardia, and a BP of 90 over 60. You can hear them wheezing even without a stethoscope. You should be most suspicious of a an acute asthma attack with all the all the signs and symptoms. I would probably say it's not an acute asthma attack. A mild allergic reaction with this BP like that I wouldn't say it's a mild moderate still the same thing as BP is too low for that anaphylactic reaction so see the patient's signs and symptoms indicate an anaphylactic reaction signs and symptoms of an anaphylactic reaction include difficulty breathing uticaria over large parts of the body and signs of shock tachycardia hypotension certain foods such as shellfish and nuts may result in a relatively slow onset of symptoms, but the symptoms can become just as severe. So what is a wheel? So A, insect stings and bites can cause a wheel, which is a raised, swollen, well-defined area on the skin. There is no specific treatment for these injuries, although applying ice sometimes makes them less irritating. 
So you're treating a woman who was stung numerous times by hornets on assessment. You know that some of her stings are still embedded in her skin. You should. Remember what I told you guys earlier about getting stingers out. What's the best way? Pull out your wallet. Pull out your credit card. Pull out your debit card. Scrape along the skin to pull the stinger out. Do not use tweezers. So B, because of the venom left in the sack, located at the end of the stinger, you should not grab the stingers in an attempt to remove them. Instead, scrape them off with a rigid object, such as a credit card. So, a young male is experiencing signs and symptoms of anaphylactic shock after being stung by a scorpion. His level of consciousness is diminished, his breathing is severely labored, and you can hear inspiratory strider and his face is cyanotic. The patient has a prescribed epinephrine auto-injector. What should you do first? <laughs> so C, the patient is not breathing adequately as noted by his decreased level of consciousness, severely labored patient, or severely labored breathing, inspiratory strider, and cyanosis. Therefore, you should first assist his ventilations with a bag bowel mask. He clearly requires epinephrine, but not before restoring adequate breathing first. Regardless of the situation, a patient's airway must be patent and his or her breathing should remain adequate at all times. So the most reliable indicator of an upper airway swelling during a severe allergic reaction is So we'll remember, what are your upper airway sounds like? What are your lower airway sounds like? What are the differences between them? So A, strider is a high-pitched sound that is most often heard during inhalation. It indicates swelling of the upper airway. Wheezing a whistling sound is caused by narrowing of the bronchioles. It indicates narrowing or swelling of the lower airway. Anxiety and cyanosis can occur from a variety of causes. They are not exclusive to airway swelling. The most common trigger of anaphylaxis is So D, foods such as shellfish and peanuts may be the most common trigger of anaphylaxis. These foods account for 30% of deaths from anaphylaxis, especially in adult, adolescents and young adults. So the adult EpiPen system delivers how much milligrams of Epi and the infant child system delivers how much milligrams. Remember, you guys need to know your doses. So B, the adult EpiPen system delivers 0.3 milligrams of epinephrine via an automatic needle and syringe system. The infant child system delivers 0.15 milligrams. When administering epinephrine by auto injector, the EMT should hold the injector in place for how long? So B, when administering Epinephrine via auto injector. Push the injector firmly against the thigh until it activates. Hold the injector in place for 10 seconds to ensure that all the medication is injected. If you guys only hold it in for five seconds, the patient's not going get, to get delivered the full medication needed, possibly. So that's why you guys want to hold it in for at least 10 seconds. <laughs> 